What's up, you guys? Welcome back. Well, this week's obvious change personally is my hair. I have not changed my hair color for about seven years. I feel like anytime anybody does like a major change like that, it's just going to be like a new chapter, new beginning. So I kind of was itching for that. I'm very excited for this year to see how everything kind of ties in together, all the stuff I've been working on with the Yegi project and my business and all that good stuff. That's my quick life update still looking for a good nanny i need all the help i can get you know because we're gonna take over the world <laughs> really takes a village on the podcast note in this week's episode i will be interviewing sandy marie who is now officially a published author ah! <laughs> so excited and so proud of her she is not a writer but she decided to go out of her comfort zone and really write a book about her life story now when we interview her you'll kind of get to know her life a little bit it's super interesting i don't want to give too much in the interview nor now in the intro but i hope you guys really enjoy this episode she's an amazing amazing human she has a foundation and a ministry that's helping young adults to really get their life together people that have been through trauma abuse or anything that might really get in their way of living a normal life she really steps up and reaches out and helps people that need the counseling and the advice and the help. I'm really excited again to have you guys get to know her. So let's go ahead and jump into the episode. Hey, beauty lovers and fellow entrepreneurs. I'm Yegi, the owner and founder of Yegi Beauty. Within five years of being my own boss, I was able to grow Yegi Beauty into a multi-million dollar company. This podcast is where I share what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur in the beauty industry. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Yegi Project. Today we have Sandy and I'm very excited to officially interview her and get to know her on our podcast. And I actually first got to know her as my lash client. So it's very exciting and inspiring to hear her story as I was doing her lash. It's like, hey, come on our podcast. So here <laughs> she is today. Let's give her a warm welcome. <laughs> hello, everybody. I am so happy to be here here with the main entrepreneur here <laughs> well again thank you for taking the time to come out so please tell our listeners who are you what do you do and just a quick background so i am sandy marie and i do i do a lot of stuff i wear, <laughs> ma I wear many hats <laughs> i wear many hats i have a catering business okay that's one i do have a foundation and this foundation, it helps communities and just many different people. And I also do women's counseling for women with, you know, past traumas and stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah. So definitely multi-talented, yes. multi-hat wearing entrepreneur women. Yes. And honestly, yes. that's a lot of times what I hear and what I see. I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs do have few passions and we find yeah. a way to kind of join them or find a way to balance them out. But, you know, with that said too, what's your hardest, what's your biggest challenge with running a business, your catering business and trying to counsel a woman and manager? foundation what's the hardest part of that the hardest part is time <laughs> it's it's one of me many wearing many hats so the hardest thing is is been time for the most part just to to give like your all to everything right? yes exactly yeah <laughs> and i think you mentioned lately you're sleeping into like not until like 2 3 a.m trying yep. to get everything <laughs> done so how has that been like and what what's making you <laughs> stay up so late <laughs> well it's exhausting for one but you know i feel like there's many people relying on me mm -hmm. you know being an entrepreneur there's people that depend on you to do your end of whatever you need to do to mm -hmm. keep people working, to keep women, you know, focused as well. Because again, you're 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 carrying all the weight. <laughs> you're carrying all the weight. You know, yes. you're you're setting a foundation for each of those, and so that's all time consuming. That's like I, the rewarding and challenging part, right? It that, is. That pressure it really is. is so exciting. But it is so much pressure. It is. It really is. It's a lot of pressure, but like you said, it's very rewarding you know yes yeah, so let's back up a little tell us a little bit about you and your story and what made you get into these two main businesses right for your your mm -hmm. your giving back to the community and also running your catering business yes so 
My catering. That I've been catering for about seven, eight years already. And You're established. <laughs> yes, I've been cooking since I was nine years old. Oh, wow. So this is a passion, a gift that I just have. And it just so, comes naturally to you. You totally. just know how to like splash yeah. your yes. in and it comes together. I do. <laughs> and I love it. I love it. I, I mean, all of my business, literally 100% of my business is word of mouth. Mm-hmm. It is word That's of like mouth. the best way yeah, to market, absolutely. right? Yeah, because <laughs> we uh, all trust who we personally know. We don't yes. even need to consider do any research. If somebody says, yeah. "Hey, this person's good," and you know, we love and trust our friend or family member, we're like, "Okay, yeah. let me go. <laughs> let yeah. me try them." Exactly. So, yeah, literally one hundred percent of it. I mean, I've done marketing, and I get more from word of mouth yeah. than I do from that. And I'm like, okay, yeah. So that this tells is a it. Lot. You know? That tells a lot. That means what you're doing is good. And you know, people yeah. are spreading the word. Yes. Thank God. Yes. Thank God. Yes. Literally. Well, lots of that to come, hopefully. Yes. And more and more in 2023. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, to be able to even employ other people who need the job too, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And this is where a lot of these women as well that, you know, like I this is where it's like integrating women who are being counseled and stuff like that and just kind of getting them back into the real world and yes, also finding their 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 kind mm-hmm. of place you know yes and wow so you found a way to put those two very <laughs> yes. separate things together yes. so explain a little bit more well, who are the women you help and who can seek for your help well that is on sandymarie.com and okay. i do i'm also pastor pastor of sandy marie ministries which is women you know being counseled and counseled and stuff like that it's whoever needs help guidance even just in life you know some of us don't know what our calling is yes a don't lot of us i purpose. feel like a lot of people don't yeah. know and sometimes being young woman we can feel kind of lost yes. and all over the place you yeah. know so it's nice to have a place that you can go to to get the guidance exactly. to start off with and i think it all starts off with just knowing your identity mm-hmm. many don't many become young mothers for example so mm-hmm. to them they're just mom Mm-hmm. But there's more to that. There's yeah, more to just so mom. much more. <laughs> yeah. So many don't know that. Many don't understand that. So this is where you know just you the whole process in. of just knowing who you are. Like, what do you like? Who are mm-hmm. you as a person? Not as a mom, you know, but yes. as a person, or even as a business owner. Yeah. You know, many get lost in just work alone. Yeah. <laughs> and building, but it's like, whoa, well, let's take a step back. And what about you? Uh, yeah, you who as a are you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's great, honestly. Yeah. With your catering business, when did you know that you could fully make this your... You said you had a passion for the cooking and mm-hmm. for for all of that. Since you were nine, you were cooking. But yeah. when did it kind of like spark your interest that, oh, I can make this into a business and I can earn money doing what I love? Well, it's funny because... Friends and family would ask me to cook. And I mean, I never charged anything. I would just do it. (laughs) Sure. Until my mom's like, hey, why don't you like start doing this? You know, like make this into a business. And I'm like, really? You know, and I was like, what was your hesitation? You know what? I just, I just didn't think that. You know? (laughs) You just didn't think you could get paid doing what you're just doing anyway. This is where the whole identity part, because again, in order for you to be able to help others, you had to have gone through it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know my identity as a woman, as a person. I was just working at other companies and I was always like promoted really quick because I naturally have leader skills. Mm-hmm. I'm bossy, I guess. Yeah. I think I'm bossy. It comes naturally too. <laughs> so, it's different, you yeah. know. Like le- leadership skills are a whole different skill set, and yes. some people have it more naturally, or some people because of their life experiences, we build it, you yes. know, without even knowing. Yeah. And then some people, if they really want to, they work on it and they can become they can. leaders, Absolutely. right? And it's nice that you kind of came natural. So you're like, hmm, maybe yeah. I should lead. So I was like. Well, um okay so i mean i already had it but i guess i didn't think that i can just do it i mean i come from a family (laughs) of entrepreneurs just needed somebody to give you that little push yeah that light bulb you know and so i was like okay well you know what (laughs) i can do that (laughs) i love that and so yeah i just i started doing it i mean obviously it started off slowly and then i did take a break for a couple years you know i had 
gotten married at that time and I just kind of took a break to really just set a foundation even in marriage you know so yeah so, so, which is super necessary the first yeah. couple of years of marriage is confusing <laughs> yeah that's kind of it hard is. right you're trying to find your peace with a whole new person in a whole yeah. new setting you know yeah. who does what so it's not it's it sounds great sometimes but sometimes the challenges it's, of it is is hard. a lot it's, it's hard. hard absolutely it's hard because <laughs> i mean you can only control you and what you exactly. do exactly and i'm so glad you mentioned that because i think it's so so important in life and for entrepreneurs so in life is a whole other thing yeah as a wife or as a mother mm -hmm. you know we want to control people around us because yeah. you know we want the best for them Absolutely. or we want the best for the circumstance but in business too you know some employees um or some uh, managers or leaders or business owners try to kind of control their employees and yeah. they don't get it that does not work it does we not. have zero control over people mm -hmm. right do Absolutely. you agree 100 yes and unless we are actually leading where where they want to follow you, mm -hmm. where they want to, you know, work with you. Yeah. And they come to the conclusion that they want to change and work on whatever they want to work on. It's never going to happen, yeah, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so absolutely. I think that was a very hard lesson for me that I personally learned in life that, hey, yeah. you can't control anybody or anything. I learned this in my personal life and then I applied it to business. Absolutely. <laughs> but, I, but I, yeah. We have to go through that yeah. in order for us to learn and to be able to apply it. There's no other way. <laughs> yes tell me your your side of it how did you realize that nope i can't control people i'm just gonna you know focus on me and do the best i can for the people who are actually seeking the help i would say it was mainly probably started in my marriage <laughs> <laughs> that's where it started i mean of course i'm i'm no longer married but <laughs> well, it started I'm sure for there. a good reason absolutely and you're, it sounds like you're happy about I the really, situation you know what? I, i'm good i'm happy good. i'm at peace i learned a lot through the process yeah. you know that's all that's all it's that's about all that, life lessons yeah, every absolutely. everything we go through <laughs> absolutely i learned a lot i learned that yeah you can't you can't make somebody do what they don't want to do no and you cannot control them like all you can do is hey you know pray for them yeah that's it you know yeah. that's it and whatever they do is it's up, to, up them. to them but from there it was also in ministry because i was you know overseeing a whole church and so tell me more about that i think i don't know too much about that area yeah. so what do you do in your ministry like what is your role and so yeah. <laughs> my, well question. my role in my in my ministry which is sandy marie ministries is i oversee everything but i mainly counsel women okay i counsel women so that is so my, you manage like the ministry itself but yes. your personal day-to-day -day would you do the counseling yes and these are you know these are one-on-one -on -one counseling mm -hmm. that i'm doing i'm gonna be opening up this um in 2023 in january to group counseling oh, to okay. group settings i love you know that. i definitely want to do that because we all need it yeah and at some people day, thrive more in groups because they're shy you know yes. or they don't feel as comfortable but maybe if somebody goes with them mm -hmm. or you know they know they're not alone and they're in a group setting they can just sit and listen yeah. you know so i think and that's it's been great. a like a higher demand of okay. me and my time and so i'm like okay i i oh. don't have the time to be able to give everybody that one-on-one -on -one. okay so okay. i'm gonna start scheduling where it's like okay on this day at this time this is Group. you know okay yeah so so that's a solution you found and i'm glad you bring that up because yeah. in business too we always especially service type of business yes we, we th there's limited time mm -hmm. there's just so much we could do even if we will use every second of the day of the time and we're booked but what do we do next yeah right so now your solution which i love was like yeah. opening it up to groups instead of one-on-one -on -one. So, yes. so you're pretty much like 10 times in your time see so if there's 10 people in that group yes. or you know and if it was a business that you're earning money for this you mm -hmm. would 10 times earn that that money for the 10 people instead of the one-on-one -on -one. so yeah. i love that this comes up you know because this is an entrepreneurial and personal development podcast so some people kind of get stuck and are at that cap they're like okay i'm fully booked but you know i don't want to have employees like what do i do you know what's my next step and i think that's a great great idea for yeah. some of our our listeners that they can consider okay you know maybe on instead of one-on-one -on -one certain things maybe i can do group type of yeah type of events i mean i think you get more like you're able to help more mm -hmm. as far as the ministry the counseling all of that no i don't charge for that 
that's just literally me just i want to if i can help you overcome you know trauma or anything Mm -hmm, you know whatever mm -hmm. wherever you feel you're stuck Mm -hmm. if i can help you that is a blessing for me in itself you know i don't charge for that i I think the only thing i'm charging for right now is the catering catering. (laughs) well you know you have to make money somehow i think that's you have to live you know and it's it's so true because even helping the community you know we help people if they need clothes they need Mm -hmm. blankets they need food all of that stuff and again i mean these are things of course people are welcome to donate to the foundation and stuff like that but Um, somebody still needs to manage it and the timing and all of that and And pay for it (laughs) yeah and pay for it and pay for it so this is where it's like i do i work a lot because everything honestly is coming out of my pocket (laughs) i love helping people too and but also at the end of the day we need to find that balance of how much of our time can go into helping people for free you know if it's our time if it's money we're donating or whatever um it may be or spending that time like on our business or something that's earning income so what has been kind of your experience or what has been kind of like your motivation because sometimes it does get hard to keep going if you see sometimes like you know there is no some sort of reward and a lot of people look at that rewards a lot of times as monetary reward yeah. but what keeps you going especially the nights where you're up until 3 a.m 4 a.m and you're exhausted but you know you're you're doing this <laughs> what keeps you going what keeps me going is my faith in god literally that's that's what keeps me going every day because what we do is not even about us and what we can produce Mm -hmm. but who we can help and who they can help along the way and it kind of trickles down where it's like when you can bless somebody they want to be a blessing to others as well yeah it is and that's that positivity that goes around i really believe that now i know talking to you earlier you found god later on in life and you have a very cool story i don't know if you want to share that on our podcast or not you do i'll go ahead and share a little bit whatever you want to share yeah yeah (laughs) a lot is in the book oh yes and we want to talk about the book (laughs) next so she is also releasing a book that she's been working really hard on so besides everything she's been writing and working with publishers trying to push this to go live and i think you said in about a month or so yes finally Ah, great way to start the new year it's been hard because for one i'm not a writer (laughs) but you know after that i have learned so much that i'm like become a writer i've become a writer and add an author to my title i love (laughs) it i love it but you know i know that this book is going to impact many the book it's got nine chapters okay nine chapters of different times in my life where i really had to overcome certain obstacles and situations and stuff like that and of course i came from brokenness you know i came from two parents who were you know kids yeah kids having kids they had no guidance no nothing so they kind of had to figure it out on their own they did their best yes and um part of that you know of course i went through a lot of trauma growing up as a child and so that's kind of what led me into counseling women because many go through you know sexual abuse and brokenness and all and and it's feeling just, empty or not yeah, like knowing who you are like you said Ide- yeah identity issues all of that and if you know kids raising kids you're not it's showing different. them love because you don't understand that yet and sometimes and, too like even i had my kids later and yeah. i think i was fully uh, i am i, I am a fully <laughs> adult so but even that had so many challenges it where does. i did lose my identity myself yes. for a uh-huh. good period of time yeah. so i can only imagine somebody who's already so young and is a kid and doesn't know who they really are bringing in a kid in the world and now you have to not only care for yourself your body which back then that wasn't even a thing like there yeah. wasn't much self-care self love it no. was just like okay figure you, figure it out don't mm-hmm. complain you're fine you know yeah. even if you know and, and it's sad but even for a lot of women too like the postpartum depression stuff mm-hmm. it was not even recognized so we don't even know what some people went through and of course that affects the children by default without you know even wanting to hurt our children yeah. you know it, it happens again we didn't have that love you know we we weren't shown love we weren't taught love nothing so that leads us to you know looking for love in the wrong places yeah and we're expecting something from somebody that 
they probably don't care either. Yeah. It, it just becomes constant. Not only like, are you feeling rejected, but you're feeling empty because yeah. you're not receiving. Like something's missing, but yeah. you don't even know what. And you're just probably angry. You're trying to find it and find it and yeah. seek it elsewhere. But you don't realize maybe you need to start within, right? For me, it was it was God. Okay, okay. For me, so it now it all ties yeah. ties together. For me, it was God. God, God had to show me He was real because I didn't believe in Him. I didn't. I mean, I grew up. And in it's the such church. a sensitive subject, it you really, know. It like, is right, and it's like I'm Armenian, so we are yeah. like kind of we were born and we we're raised Christian, but yeah. we're not like really strict Christians. Especially yeah. that we grew up in America, it's like religion's not really a thing unless you yeah. come from a very religious family. But it's like I'm Christian, but like how much do I even know? Like I don't think I've ever really fully even understood read it, the Bible right? or understood it. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, I'm Christian. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and um, I do believe, like I personally do believe in a God or a higher power Mm -hmm. you know like i'm i i like i felt it in my life that something greater exists or i feel sometimes like some somebody something is watching out for me like i can't keep getting lucky in certain situations so i felt that but it is such a weirdly subject and i feel like anytime anybody a lot of people that hear god and you know like this is a public podcast so i do want to kind of cover that a lot of people kind of like i don't know they don't know how to handle it it so how to react to it so a lot of times when and a lot of people believe in different gods different higher powers yeah. and a lot of people nowadays believe in the universe or you mm-hmm. know that that energy or whatever yeah. they want to call it so i just want to cover that aspect yeah. of it i've kind of looked into all the different things and it all kind of comes down to that like there is some sort of higher power energy to really cover the basis of all religions and everything and for yeah. you you know so that's kind of what you put your faith in and yes. you found something that you can give your give and find your love in yeah honestly that it was just like literally it was a peace it was a peace and it was the love that god literally filled me up with where i was like whoa i've never felt this i've never gotten this from anybody yeah and so when you can just literally rely on just god and not have to seek elsewhere that's just a whole different ballgame. Yeah, and I think we kind of had that conversation. You just have to feel it. Yeah. Like, there's no point into somebody trying to convince you or say exactly. anything. You just have to feel it or come to a point in your life where maybe you experience something where like, okay, yeah. <laughs> this is what it is. Well, God had to literally radically show me. Yeah, so, that's what I, I want to lead this, to because yeah. I loved that story. It was so like, whoa. Yeah, so this is where, okay, my... I. You you know, one of my friends from growing up, he was like, I was partying, wiling out, thought I was living my best <laughs> life, you know? You're young, drugs, you didn't alcohol, know. everything, you name it, I was doing it. And he was like, Hey, you know, come to church with me. I was like, uh no, not happening. <laughs> not happening. Why do you think I need church? <laughs> yeah, and so I was because I mean I used to party with him back then, you know, but then he started going to church and stuff, but I was like, not my thing, yeah. you know. But because I went through so much trauma going growing up, I was like, there is no God. If there was God, I would have never gone through what I went mm-hmm. through. So there's that's not true. Yeah. So to me, I had shut that out. But he was he bugged me for so long until I was like, okay, if I go one time, are you going to leave me alone? <laughs> He's like, yes, I promise. I'm like, okay. So I did. I went this one time. And I walk in, and it's like a concert. I'm like, okay, this is not church but whatever <laughs> i'm there it's and so you know that they, they did like an altar call for healing and so i was like okay god's gonna <laughs> heal people you know i'm just like rolling your eyes <laughs> exactly but at the time i had you know a bad ankle because i had gone to the snow and i twisted my ankle and i couldn't wear heels for like a long time so i was like okay whatever let's go let's see what this god is all about you know and so you know i go up they pray for me whatever i go sit back down and then they you know they want to do another altar call for those who want to give their lives to the lord and my friends like go and i'm like uh no i'm good (laughs) so i'm just sitting there but they're like okay repeat you know this prayer whatever we repeat it all of a sudden i'm bawling crying and I'm oh, like, wow. what is going on? <laughs> like, why why this am is... I crying? I was like, people are probably looking at me. I'm cleaning my face, you know? And so I'm like, okay, what was that? You know, obviously at the time I didn't know, but that was the Holy Spirit, you know? Mm. So I was like, okay. The next day 
I wake up like at three, four in the morning. I didn't get up out of bed, but I woke up out of my sleep and then I start moving my ankle and I'm mm-hmm. like, no way. No oh way. my God. Like, it's like goosebumps. It's like, yeah, really? It's like, like, that's really happened. <laughs> God woke me up to show me he healed my ankle. Again, he See, it's had crazy. to like, radically I'm having do a hard it. time to believe. Obviously, I believe yeah. you. Yeah. And so, <laughs> but I'm even, I was like, that's too good to be true, right? You know what? That's, that's what I've learned throughout this time. God is so good. Like, I, it's too good to be true, but you have to feel it. And I think that's where we left that, that off. Like, you need to experience it to kind of know, like, yes. what you're talking about. Yes. And, you know, the next day I have lunch with my mom and I'm like, Mom, he's real. He's real. She's like, who's real? My God is real. And I'm crying because I'm ju- I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. And she was just like, okay, looking at me like weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> I love but, it though. You know, I love it. I, you found just, your peace. Yeah. I And just to have that experience, like God knew that I it. had to have, like he had to show me, show me. <laughs> and so after that, I would test him. I'm not going to lie. I would test him. <laughs> Because I Aren't wanted you to know. Are supposed to not test him? Isn't well, that that's kind a thing. of a thing? <laughs> I, again, I when you're... not from the cartoons <laughs> I used to watch as a little You're like, kid. isn't it written? <laughs> I don't know that much yeah. about the Bible, but I don't think you're supposed to test him. You know what? I did. Again, because I was like... You I, just I needed still, more. Yes. And so I was going out with, you know, with this boyfriend who's, you know in a cartel and all that stuff and i knew i wasn't supposed to be with him so i was like god if i love how you say not, that so nonchalantly yeah <laughs> you're with a very dangerous guy yeah. let's put it that way you know, yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know it's it's and it's part of my story you know what i mean and this is where and you and guys I think, have to check out get her book once yes, it's finally released we'll mention it everywhere so we can yes. actually read the full story so don't give too much yeah, away but know. just a little little hint yes so i was you know with this guy and i was like okay lord if i'm not supposed to if he's not for me remove him the next day all of a sudden we'd break up and i'm hmm. like what <laughs> okay Whoa. and so you know t- two days later we'd get back together and then i would do it again lord if he's not for me remove him and he kept doing it. i was like oh my god you really <laughs> are <listening>. real <laughs> you know so at that point, I knew, I knew he was real. I knew he was real. And I've been talking to him ever since. I've been literally like, my life has never been the same. Wow. I it's never that. been the same. I just came out of everything that I've been through and you found, you found yourself. <laughs> yeah, I healed, you know, and it's when you're healed, it's a whole different ball game. You see life so different. You see people so different. You can love so easily. Mm. You can love just anybody. Does it get rid of all the anger that you were yes. feeling? Yes, it does. Good. It does. You're able, like, that's one thing. I'm, I've am i become a very forgiving person, which I was not. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was not. I was so mean and resentful, <laughs> you know. But I have become very forgiving, very loving, you know. My family, it, I mean, it trickled down to them. Yeah, and you're at a point amazing. where you're counseling other women to help yeah. them through situations that maybe they don't know how to start feeling happiness yes. or joy or find themselves. So honestly, thank you so much for sharing that story. Yes. And uh, there is a, your one final test, a very big, dangerous test you did with God, I think, right? Is part of the story in your book. So yeah. um, <laughs> so we're not yeah. going to cover that. I won't push you to you tell remember that. that. <laughs> I do remember. I love that that yes. story well you know it was very interesting yes <laughs> i forgot i told you that okay that's see that's awesome i'm gonna that's leak awesome. it. i'm just kidding yeah. you know what it's a, you know it's so funny because i've been told you know when you are a pastor or when you're doing great in life people are gonna come and want to you know sabotage you and leak out your you know your past and i'm like um, I'm sorry, but I'm not worried about that. Yeah, I said, you want to know about my past? past? 
it's yeah. in my book. <laughs> I will leak it myself. <laughs> I'm not ashamed. That. Honestly, you know? I think that's huge. And not yeah. only about anybody that goes through crazy drama, you know, I think yeah. a lot of times we're afraid of our past or we judge ourselves yeah. for no no reason. You yeah. know, that's the past. It is what it is. We just have to accept it, talk about it and move on and, so yeah. we can actually fully accept it and get over it. I feel like if we keep certain things a secret or mm-hmm. hide it or be ashamed of it, yeah. Yeah. then that's when we're still letting it affect us yeah the shame uh, is what keeps us stuck keeps yeah. us bound you know but when we can understand hey you know what i'm not perfect yeah, and there's and the next guy is. or no the next one is guy perfect. that nobody is perfect and literally the more people i talk to the more i see that everybody has gone through stuff everybody oh, is dealing with stuff currently so yeah. we're not alone and it's okay mm-hmm. to talk about it and and accept ourselves for our past and if we want to be a different version of ourselves we can work on it and Absolutely. become who we want to become right yeah and which that's, is very true that's why there's women like you to help help other people to get there if they need the help okay so you have a foundation and a ministry so is that the same thing or like i'm a little confused because you're doing so much because i do want to ask some follow-up questions about that but please yes the ministry is separate from that foundation i do things separately but the foundation itself so this foundation it's called time to rise up okay and so we call it the true foundation because you know time to rise up is tru okay so, okay nice <laughs> yeah it just happened that way and so i'm going international with it wow and the reason being is like so you're with really this, seeing a huge I, whole the vision, vision i have is real big <laughs> so tell us i think it's so inspiring honestly yeah. hearing i know a lot of people have told me when i share my vision like people get super inspired so i know they're gonna get so inspired if you share your vision your huge big yes. dreams vision so tell us a little bit the vision i have for this foundation is creating outreach centers for people to clean up out of drugs alcohol trauma all of that stuff okay and getting them back not only into the real world but getting them on the track of becoming entrepreneurs that is really the main goal you know like i don't want to raise up people to be healed and everything to go work for somebody else but i want them to be leaders to create more of them you know what i mean yeah i could see that's in my head i'm like wow that's good that takes a lot you know to take somebody from ground zero almost or even negative you know at that point if they don't even have that foundation of Mm -hmm. like the self-love or self-worth or feeling that you know that 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 uh fulfillment then you're gonna have to take somebody from negative side to like at a norm and then train them to be more independent even more goal-oriented and entrepreneur yeah. so i could i could only see the challenge exciting challenges you it are is gonna overcome it is with that i do believe it will be challenging but i also believe that when you are already walking in it you're already setting the example you're setting the tone so do you and think so they're people like people are gonna come to you see uh, are people coming to you to seek the help yeah when they're in that situation okay absolutely because I, know, i've already been receiving that too okay great yeah, yeah so this is i mean it's, it's all stemming from what i've already experienced mm-hmm. and what i've seen and also i want to have for example like youth you like kind of youth groups but mm-hmm. more like after school basketball sports all sorts of stuff keep kids off the street type Mm -hmm. of thing you know encourage them to 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 pretty much to do positive things with something yeah Yeah. absolutely and i feel like we don't have enough of that wow you know we don't have you know mentors to guide these kids no not a lot of free resources exactly and that's i mean honestly this is where i'm like okay i work a lot because what i want to do is free (laughs) you know i feel like okay every yeah in order to be something you have to have the money and it's okay if we can make it easier for these kids you know to have the resources yeah to want to become something you know same with child care Mm-hmm. you know child care and such huge issues that yeah. <laughs> we can talk about for a very long time yeah and so i mean all of this is all faith-based all faith-based you know so 
that that's the goal that's and your that's going to be your mission with your foundation yes. i love that and you Group said international homes. yes yes <laughs> wow i love your huge huge vision and i yeah. can't wait to see it alive me too um <laughs> and honestly wait. i've had similar vision when i can realistically get to it to do with the youth centers that yeah. are creating people not necessarily trauma because i don't know too much about that area but more bringing low-income families children who don't have the knowledge and the privilege to yeah. be around other entrepreneurs or uh, other leaders that can yes. give them good mentorship advice so that's kind of on my see, long term awesome. to do it too, so maybe we can connect and, and see how we can make, yes. make a little change make a little big change in this world absolutely <laughs> absolutely i feel like that's the goal Thank we've got to leave a footprint yeah, you know yes, we've got to yes. leave a footprint on this earth <laughs> how about the catering company is that basically is that supporting you financially to see the foundation and your vision to come into life or is are do you what's your plan with that have you thought about I, it are well you gonna... i do yes it is but i also work i also do other stuff so i do mentor i youth, i do youth mentoring as well as part of my job but also again you know it's like I want to work in what I love to do of course you know because I, I want to be where I'm going to make a difference okay so I know you're juggling so much and you're so passionate you really want to you know make your dream life come true you're business your counseling your ministry your book you know all of that good stuff so what does a typical day in your life look like with trying to do so much so a typical day in my life would look like coffee first <laughs> coffee first for sure <laughs> big cup yes a really big cup <laughs> checking emails checking orders from there, I mean, it depends. I mean, yeah, there's every no day is, I know I always have a hard time answering yeah. that question myself, honestly. Yeah, so because I understand. every day is different. Either I'm doing more counseling. So that how do day, you, how do you, or I'm balance doing more ministry. It. How do you keep track of it? I guess, do you have like organizational system where you can make sure you're on top of all those projects or businesses you're working on? I do. I What's do. your system? So my system Share is my phone secret. and my calendar. <laughs> That's it. I literally have to juggle my time where it's like, okay, from this time to this time, you're working on this. And I literally, in order for me to accomplish a good day, a fulfilling day, I have mm -hmm. to stick to that. So you just to. plan out um, from your to-do list everything that you have to do. You everything plan it out and you day. schedule it in, in your calendar for that day or future days. Is that yes. pretty much how you follow it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because I also do, I, I just started doing conferences as well. Oh, wow. So I do, I do. Yeah. So like, you know, guest speaking. Oh, so people can book you to yeah. go speak. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And uh, your story is so empowering, your full story. So I'm sure a lot of people will benefit hearing you speak in person. I remember as I was doing your lashes, listening to your story, I was getting goosebumps <laughs> and I was so excited to like just connect with you and yeah. talk and, and like see the changes you're making in other people's lives. So you know what? And again, that's the fulfilling part of it mm -hmm. we don't we go through trials and we we overcome not only for ourselves but for others yeah. you know it's for others because yeah there's and so many broken people walking around and it's sad because it, it, it just trickles on to their kids it and is then their it kids, just makes kids, the world not a happy place yeah. honestly that was part of my mission trying to do this podcast because ultimately awesome. like i do believe if people do more of what they love and they're happier they yeah. are working on themselves working on like the career that they love they're going to be happier and better people than they can mm -hmm. help other people and ultimately the world will be a yeah. better place Absolutely. right Absolutely. So it really, really does that. And um, in another podcast episode, we did cover like how important it is in our happiness for us to help other people. So it's almost selfish to help other people, right? Yeah. So I want to make that clear that it is such a, a, a weird feeling and it's not a weird, like a exciting it is. I don't know why it's how to describe it. Like for me, it's super fulfilling. Just to I'm even just, get that thank you, you've changed my life. Or thank you, even if it's two dollars, you know, for someone who can use it. I think just that feeling of knowing that you did something good for somebody else makes you happier. <laughs> you know, it's so funny that you mentioned this because I've been helping at this it's a recovery home. Mm-hmm. 
teens with, you know, mental health, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so recently I just, you know, spoke to one of the uh, facility managers there. And the first thing she tells me, she says, I saw your heart as soon as you walked in. It's like you had a halo on your head and like you have a heart, you know, for all of this. And literally like my tears came out because I'm just like, we've, we just are constantly going Mm -hmm. and, you know, just trying to do the best we can, you know, especially when you, you know, you're an entrepreneur and you're super busy, Mm -hmm. you're, you're going, you're going, you're going that when we forget to stop and think. Yeah. And so when people actually point it out, it's just like, Wow, like, really? <laughs> so all of this that I'm doing, it, it's paying off. I, I felt like, okay, so I'm doing what I'm supposed to be. I'm on yeah, the right track. And yeah. I was like, it's literally all God. Like, I have that energy. I have the peace, you know, the joy in doing it all, too, mm-hmm. you know? And it's all God. I mean, this isn't me. It's all God. That's And that's exactly, and there's not a day that goes by that I'm just like, I'm not like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, because I've overcome so much. You know, I've overcome so much. Thank you for sharing that. (laughs) One last question. We are running short on time, but I wanted to see what are your last words of encouragement for our listeners that want to start their own business, that want to explore helping other people or starting a foundation? What is your last piece of advice for them? I would say make sure 100% of your heart is in it. Because whatever you literally love to do and you're wholeheartedly doing, you will grow. You will succeed, whatever it may be, whether it be a business, whether it be, you know, helping your community, whether it be um, foundation, whatever it may be, do it wholeheartedly. Okay, I love that. Do it wholeheartedly. I love that as our yeah. last piece of advice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you again You're so welcome. much for sharing. I could talk to you forever. <laughs> and I love hardworking women and individuals who have big goals and dreams. So thank you again for your time, for being Absolutely. on the podcast. Thank I you look, for having me. Of course. I look forward to grabbing your book. So yes. please tell our listeners where can they find you and what is your book going to be called? My book is called In My Sin Is Where He Found Me. Okay, I love yeah, that title. That's the title of my book, and you can find me at sandymarie.com. Okay, perfect. And we'll link all that information yes. below. Yes. So thank you again. Absolutely. You thank soon. you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Please rate and review this podcast. Follow and engage with us on social media under the Yegi Project. And if you're interested in being a guest, email info at theyegiproject.com. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes.